This episode of Super GG Radio is brought to you by our Patreon. Patrons of the show can get our Dogs of Super GG Radio newsletter, Super GG Radio stickers, a slap on your closest PC or bag, input on what we cover, game nights with the hosts, and even a chance to win a copy of an indie we talked about. Not only that, but 90% of all patron contributions go to the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. Visit patreon.com slash superggradio to learn more. Previously on Super GG Radio. All in all, I guess I love spiders. I had Linux issues. No. If you guys are World of Warcraft fans and you are aware of Baron's chat, it oh, was very... Oh, no. It, it was... It was no... It was kind of close. Where all oh, of a sudden, no. Like, people would say, my mother's a lovely woman. Best friend of the podcast, Jeff Grubb, mentioned on Game Best Best friend. friend. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. What's good, Internet, and welcome to session 253 of Super GG Radio, where friends chat about video games and all things adjacent. I'm your Chicago-style pizza of the podcast, Eric Getty Gettinger. With me, as always, is human Pizone, Alex Arona. You know, I get real hyped on P-Zones. I'm self-contained. I'm cheesy. I'm delicious. You're, you rip me open and all the stuff comes... I don't know. I don't like this. <laughs> I'm out, Getty. <laughs> Also with us is a handful of pepperoni, Joel DeWitt. So there's some sickos on TikTok. And uh, one Just brand some. of that, one brand of sicko is the kind of restaurants and businesses that'll make just disgusting looking food mm-hmm. and, and present it like it's something great. Well, pizza places love to have a big brick of pizza. They will just cook the pepperonis on a, what looks like a shovel, and then just dump the cooked pepperonis grease and all on top mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. ruining pretty much every piece of the pizza experience so okay. the, the moral is to cook it on the pizza yes because you want that pepperoni to log off a tiktok oh yeah all right i have found that since i've been locked out of tiktok i have just now gone to instagram reels and and youtube shorts and it's just not the same well Maybe it's for the best. <laughs> Finally with us, Mr. Hot and Ready, like a Little Caesars pizza, Alec Parks. Yeah, I'm so hot and ready, I get us kicked off the internet. You you want to do that? Oh, do we want me to do that? It's your I mean, machine will we get more viewers? <laughs> <laughs> for the 30 seconds before we get kicked off. Please don't. Please, please keep your pants on. I, have, I It feels weird that I have to keep asking once a week. Can I just say that even if he didn't have his pants on, we wouldn't be able to tell? We don't do pants checks on this podcast. We do hand checks. <laughs> Fidget spinner, Joel. <laughs> Fidget spinner, Joel. <laughs> Caught <Wow>. red-handed. <laughs> Caught red-headed, yeah. <laughs> Inappropriate, sir. <laughs> of all the things that happen here, that's that's the deal breaker. That's the that's way. the most inappropriate okay. thing. I hope that's right. as inappropriate as we get tonight. It's not We're like all Alex Winnie already... the Pooh. We're fully Winnie the Pooh out. <laughs> yeah, I, I could change into a red shirt. Give me a couple of minutes. Uh, no, no. In all seriousness, this week we waffle in early adopters. The news has us checking our bank accounts, and I get C blocked again in the backlog. Yep, I already see what Alex put in there. So. No one put anything in there. Exactly. It seems like I'm the only one that beats games here. I can't confirm or deny that. All of the games I want to talk about are too long. Early Adopters, where we play alphas, betas, and games, where we get our detective on. All right. Who had an opportunity to play Detective Dotson? It's an audio podcast. It's two, oh, wow. not yeah. raise our hands. Two out of no, three out of four of us. I nice take try. it. Yeah. Did did you Joel or no? I didn't. I didn't attempt it. You did not get to Detective my, Dotson. My my time, my timer went up. I I ran out of time this week. Baseball consumed everything. Hmm. I have a solution. Ba- baseball for that. is is all encompassing. Steam Deck. 
Yes. Banks. That was that was a lot more uh, friendly than my <laughs> initial thought. Was. Oh no, I'm. I thought you were going am, to a dark play. <laughs> I am not the perpetrator here. Okay. All right. I mean, when I'm they announced those suggestion. like those higher end Steam decks, I think the the used market like tanked. So you might be able. To, let me see if I can find you one here. Keep talking. He's uh, yeah. he's gonna uh, go yeah, on. Yeah, you you don't have Facebook price compare for the thing I'm not getting. That that's great. Um, you know, he's just gonna buy it and send it to you. I mean, it's no PS5. And then I'm gonna charge you for it. I'm gonna say, hey man, I'm gonna send you this invoice here. Just he's no, no. You, you can invoice. just you can just match it up to the invoices I've got waiting for you. It's, oh it's, this snap! This is a zero sum game. Oh, let's he's do got this. invoices I found one for... waiting. Uh, so yeah, anyway, is... Detective Dotson. You might find yourself asking, what would it be like to be a detective? And to that, I would say, you should check out Detective Dotson. You're playing as a character. Um, the style is a 2D platformer with um, some some fun platforming, some not-so-fun platforming. But I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. But and voxels. There's voxels. Lots of voxels. And uh, you are running around this city trying to investigate your father's death. And by doing uh, just uh, a whole bunch of stuff, either talking to people, uh, in one instance you have to disguise yourself so that you can talk to a police officer, a dirty police officer. Uh, are there, there is, any other kind? I don't know that we want to get into that, but... <laughs> Uh, there's a, a scratch-off game that you get to play. There's quite a bit going on with Detective Dotson. All of it culminating in you collecting all these clues so that you can put them together on what uh, what is like a murder board and then getting one step closer to solving the mystery of who killed your father. Yeah. And I, and I, I, I will say that, like... The, the things that you find throughout that kind of add to the clues are pretty, I would say, they're very specific, but they're also just like fun ideas. So you'll find like, a, you'll find a guy that's like, oh, go buy some lottery tickets and you buy enough lottery tickets over time and eventually one's just got like a secret code on it. Or uh, you will uh, you just randomly find someone on the roof and then they'll, they'll have this piece of information. Or you find a dog on a roof and if you bring the dog to the ground, all of a sudden you get a new piece of paper with a clue. You just find different like bits and bits and bobs throughout. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that was pretty fun. Uh, just, just, by, just by the merit of exploring the world. Looking around, investigating. Oh, I'm going to see what this does and I'm going to find what this other thing does. And by touching and poking at everything eventually like clues just kind of found the found their ways to me and that felt very fun yeah. yeah so there weren't any or many spots where you felt like you were really stuck it kind of naturally flowed from one beat to the next oh you could get stuck you can definitely sure. get stuck especially if you're just running around aimlessly there are a couple of people in the city that will give you hints on what to do next and there's even one character who will sell you information but in order to get that information, you have to do quite a bit of the mini oh. games that are available. Yeah. So I would, I would not recommend doing that. I would rather recommend going through and finding every little thing instead of um, <laughs> wasting time. <laughs> it's not that the mini games are bad; it's just tedious. So one of them is putting posters up. So you have to run to different parts, usually in the self in a self-contained area, and then just slap a poster on. But you get like ten coins. Yeah, and that's it. Was it. Not a lot. And to get the clues, you need two hundred coins. Yeah, but I did. But like, so but also while you explore, you just find all these things to interact with. Yeah. That uh, if you just like f interact with it to its natural conclusion, you'll you'll get a clue. So it was more about just kind of being. Uh, like not just running through and getting into shenanigans. It was more about like, oh, this person said, "Hey, why don't you try talking to this person? I'm gonna find that person." Hey, what if you wear a disguise? That'll probably make someone else talk to you. Okay, I gotta wear a disguise. Get a disguise and then walk around. Like the clues are very specific on what you need to do. Um, you could always, yeah, just try to shortcut it by trying to grind out money. But it's it was more fun just like interacting with everything. Yeah, I really enjoyed the freedom that you had to explore, but at the same time, that turned me off. 
it was not uh i i need more direction than uh. just here go have fun explore india uh well yeah the i do want to highlight a couple of things that i found quite enjoyable when you disguise yourself there's a little bar at the bottom of the screen that says dotson and like not dotson so the more you disguised yourself like you change your hat you change your facial hair you change your shirt it slowly progressed towards like you you aren't what you normally look like so you have a better chance of the cop spilling the beans and then uh, and the, the amount of customization that was in that like i doubt that we all made the same the cosmetic enhancements to the character yeah. but who discovered the bomb I, I discovered the bomb. I, I found that very uh, <laughs> terrifying there is, um, and a little funny at the same time. Because you go yeah. over to a payphone, you if you found the clue, you type in a code, and then it's just like the little card that you get for a clue pops up and it's like, a bomb, and then the building explodes, and it's oh. a big building. Yeah, and you see pieces fly everywhere. It's, like, it's really jarring. Uh, and there is a mechanic... Where one of the things is like, oh, if you see someone drop litter on the ground, pick it up and th- hit them with it. Yeah. And if you do that, then you get money. And yeah. in this case, you have to chase this guy, find litter on the ground, and hit him with it. The guy who set the bomb. <laughs> and, like, the whole time he's kind of like, hey, what are you doing? Stop that. It's like, yeah. and like it's, it also, it, it is very clever that the bomb explosion goes off. And then you're, you walk, and all of a sudden you're covered. Like, there's, like, a thing in the foreground, so you can't see. And I'm like, what is going on? Why can't I move forward? And it said, like, I hit A, so I hit A, and I picked a piece of garbage, can- garbage, and I threw it. And there was a guy h- hidden in, like, behind the foreground item, so I couldn't see. And he just bolts. And that <laughs> is supposed to be the story beat of, like, oh, you found the bomber. Now chase after him. And, like, it, that, it, it does a good job of, of kind of making things feel a little bit more dynamic than it happened because I was very shocked that all of a sudden this guy jumps out and was like, oh god! And <laughs> runs away and I'm chasing after him now. Uh, I thought that was very fun. Yeah. And then if you can manage to find all the clues, you can put it together and have the final aha moment. Yeah. I think that was fun. I think that it does... A, yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, elements here that when you put it together can make for a an interesting puzzler because yeah just solving that one crime does not get to the end of the story right you like give me another like uh give me another big little like a little medium sized map and then let me do it again and let me do it again there is a there's a couple of games that I am aware of that came out in the last couple of years uh, the case of the golden idol being one of them that it is just like that idea of here is a map here are your here are your players. Go ahead and figure out all the clues, solve the crime, move on to the next level, and that feels like it's just bite sized. It's just a really nice little like, oh, how long did this like, Getty? How long did this one take you? Hmm, that's an excellent question. I would say, I I think I uninstalled it after I finished it, but it m- m- wasn't more than an hour. It was probably closer to half an hour. So thinking of thinking about it that way, imagine sitting down for like two, half an hour, 25 minutes to a half an hour, and just knocking out an easy puzzle, and then the game leads you into the next puzzle, and you're like, that was good enough for now. Yeah. Turn off, come back another day. That feels good. Yeah, I think that it could definitely excel in that kind of format. But we have to see where they take the story to, uh, if the other maps or other mysteries that you solve are much bigger i imagine as you get closer to the end it's going to get real crazy i mean opening act there was a bomb <laughs> yeah and it was it was it was very jarring just to like because i i didn't i didn't i i I found a clue and it just had a number printed on it and i'm like well i wonder if i do this the boom like very shocking <laughs> Now I do. Uh, I did notice at the beginning that there was the option for multiplayer for co-op. I am a little interested on in how that'll end up playing out. Hmm. Now I have thoughts. Would you like I mean, to share I, I, them? I, I feel like it's got to be very similar, right? Yeah, it's got to be pretty similar experience. But I, I guess you could do it with multiple people. Maybe make things happen quicker. Oh, maybe. 
race everybody else to see who can solve the mystery first? Get the most clues? Because I would imagine that it's probably got a shared clue experience. Yeah. You find a clue, I find a clue, all of a sudden now I have like four clues. But then there'd always be somebody. This, it, you know what? We're back. We're back in high school, and we're doing a group project. There's one person <laughs> overachieving, and everybody else is just kind of uh-huh. throwing trash at yeah. individuals while Getty puts it together for yeah. us. And you wonder why I don't want to play any co-op games with you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't wonder why. I just want it still to happen. Carry me, carry me, <laughs> guardian down. <laughs> I mean, you really carried us through uh, viscera cleanup detail. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I do for a living. Not really. <laughs> but, all right. So that was Detective Dotson. Check this one out. Uh, I, I definitely wish listed it. Alex? Oh, yeah. Alec? No, I'm going to pass on this one, I think. Okay. Fair. That's fair. It it definitely has an acquired taste. Uh, Joel didn't play, so we're going to make him I wish eagerly listed. look forward to hearing your opinions so okay. I can then decide whether or not to put it on my wish list all right so can you make him do the next one <laughs> yeah let's let's really cut some dead weight here yeah uh-huh talk all about right. you joel I, I knew you were talking about me i just wasn't <laughs> in a position to respond <laughs> okay yeah did you did you have the opportunity to play dead weight i did not and i'll be right back in a minute <laughs> oh, oh. No. okay ouch uh, Dead Weight is a really uh, interesting roguelike. You are a uh, captain of a ship of a, an airship, space or uh, yeah, air yeah, pirates, air. air pirates, yeah, sky pirates, sky pirates. Oh, and I, you're moving your ship across points of this map. What is your problem? Skies of Arcadia, man. I, yes, Skies <laughs> of Arcadia. Final Fantasy Twelve. Yeah, we got it. Who? They Final were, they Fantasy were, Twelve. They were air pirates. Yeah, they were sky pirates. There was barely any sky pirating in that game. There's like two. Sky a game pirates. about uh, a game about sky pirates yeah, yeah. and barely any sky pirating. Yes. Okay. Uh, in, in this one, there is uh, plenty of uh, sky pirating. You are going across a map, moving your airship across it. The tricky part about this is that you are slowly, slowly, slowly running out of fuel. Mm-hmm. And uh, you need to run into enemies to then attack them and steal their fuel. And then eventually you make your way to a town where you can refuel with money. You can buy upgrades, different attacks, different abilities. There are also skill trees for when you level up. (coughs) Excuse me. When you uh, run into an enemy ship, you are then put into a grid. And like uh, Into the Breach or Fights in Tight Spaces, you are doing this tactical grid-based combat turn base where you can do take a turn you see where the enemy is going to attack in a straight line and you can move out of the way before their attack hits uh i'm not great at this yeah i wasn't so great at it either it gave me you know when you're in the the airship or whatever you want to call it Mm -hmm. that reminded me in a small way of void bastards because you have to manage your resources and make sure that you're moving along to the next point. I did not enjoy that very much because for whatever reason, I think it might be because I was goofing around playing it on the steam deck, but it would just drop me. No, it just dropped me on there. And then the fuel would go so fast. Even when I was clicking, I just kept, no, I just kept it. Like it just kept kept, like saying, Oh, you fell into the void. Yeah. That happened to me quite a few times. The turn-based combat, it's got some charm to it. I do like the uh, option that you have to select your character at the very beginning. So you could play as either, what was it, like a barbarian or like a ranged yeah. unit. So it does give you some options here. Um, potentially replayability, too. And if it turns out to be run-based, then it probably have a lot more fun with it. I just think that for the small amount of time that I spent with Deadweight, the mechanics probably need a, a little bit more fine tuning. I'm not, I'm not feeling too bad about how I did, but I feel like I would have had a lot more time if it wasn't constantly like, you fell into the void. Just like a little bit more time to navigate, 
would make a world of difference in this case. It's really it's yeah, it's punishing. It's is the word I would use. But Sorry, there's it feels like there's no like repercussions for doing it. You just you're like, okay, and then it starts you over again. Yeah, exactly. And and the other part is that I even even in like the combat I felt like like the like I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. Like I couldn't sometimes I could move, sometimes I couldn't. Yeah. Like sometimes I could attack, sometimes I couldn't. It just I need some You need uh, a better I, tutorial? No, I wouldn't even say tutorial. I would say uh indicators. I would like to know a little bit more like clearly. It can is this a move? Is it like you can attack then move, move then attack? Is there a like an order of operations that you can only do? In my and experience if not, it was one or the other. Yep. Yeah, and so that should be a little bit more clear about okay, you can't move this turn, you can move this turn. Give me a dedicated like press this button to move. Give me like a like give me a grid around it of how far I can move. You know what I mean? Like just make it very clear. And I feel like in this case dead weight it wasn't as clear as I wanted. I wanted mm-hmm. a very specific uh, path known to me. I wanted to click and know exactly where to go. I wanted to pay attention to, okay, how many spaces can I move? Then how many attacks can I move? Where are my action points? Where is this? Where is that? And I felt like they kind of didn't want to, it, like they wanted a cleaner UI. So doing so, it sacrificed a lot of intention, atten, in, t- intentionality to me. I needed in, attention to detail and intentions. I don't think intentionality is worth. No, no, I I definitely had to stare at the ceiling to think about it for a second. I had to, yeah, you need to Googling. make sure that it allows you to declare your intentions, right? Yeah. Oh, is he really googling it? All right. <laughs> it is a word. <laughs> I think he googled intentionally. No, intentionality. Intentionality. Okay. Intention. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, yeah, it's correct. The jury's still out. The uh, the quality of mental states that consists in their being directed towards some object or state of affairs. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Sounds Delib- like you're grasping deliberate or He's grasping the, straws the, here. The fact of being deliberate or purposive. Purposive? Purposive. You know what? Yeah, that's uh. Per- that's how it's said. Was it papusa? <laughs> yeah, that's a word, right? <laughs> Love a papusa. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll I'll put to put this for you guys so you can see. Yeah, it make sure you send it out out. so that the whole internet can see it again. Let's make sure All that right. we get it on the screen. Is, uh, is that a thing? Is that so? Up? That is. Uh, uh, unless you have anything else that you want to uh, toss in there, Alec, was your experience more the more the same? It was more of the same. I do like okay. that it had a skill tree that is going to make uh, runs and the game definitely more enjoyable, mm-hmm. being able to customize it. Um, yeah. Just a little bit more fine-tuning, I think, is what we would ask for here. But overall, still, good. Uh, I, I like the idea. I like what they've done so far. I just want a little... Just start out a little... little a little bit less brutal. Just a little <laughs> bit less. Also, I will say that um, I did think that there, like, there's a skill tree. You put your points in the skill tree. That if you were going to remove your points, it says, "Do you want to shake the tree?" And I was like, "That's yeah. kind of that's cute. It's cute. I like that. It's cute." All right, so we're gonna move on to the third game that we have for early adopters, and the only person that gets to talk for this one, yep, is Joel. Oh, sorry, I need to be right back. Hold on a minute here. Oh, my God. He's not. He's kidding. He's kidding. Come on. You know, when he gets off the first thing. I was halfway. I usually don't give you warning. I usually just walk away, right? Um, Also, I was more more curious because I was like, you played three hours of this game. He played. Did you make it all the way through the tutorials then? No, I did All ten missions? I didn't. I, I Three hours is probably an exaggeration, but I was definitely sitting on the couch last night at, like, 11, 15, 11, 20, and thinking, like, I should I should already be in bed by now. Wait, what um, game were we talking about? Tug of War. Tug of War. T-U-G-G-O-W-A-R. All one word. Nice. All one word. Nailed it. So, uh, hey, kids, you liked war? 
the card it game. It never changes. Let's <laughs> I'm told it never changes. Specify the card game because I think that that's the first step here. Yeah. Wait, so... that's what that is. Alex, you can't no, be serious. I... I thought it was like tug of war with the the. Okay, the when you played mm. war as a kid, you would uh-huh. battle against people, right? Uh huh. So yeah. each person would drop down a card, and I then whoever war. had the winning hand would take the cards, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a tug of war to see who has the most cards at the end. I guess, but I didn't. That, that's not how I saw this because there's like a meter. There is a meter, and that's so that's kind not of, that's not. But like, I'm not playing my hand against somebody. I'm playing my are. hand each t- against each the turn. Meter. You're playing it against the other person, and it takes turns. Yeah, but the, yes, the, I, the, I understand the, what you're the saying. The meter, Alex, is actually land. Like they're different yeah. tiles of land. So like, I, I I understood that. I played through a bunch of. <laughs> you this. don't under, you don't understand. <laughs> you don't. This get is. It. I just don't. I just don't. I don't agree that this is necessarily war. It is. Like it. it, it you're using it tanks. Airplanes, drones. No, not no, not military war. War, as in like the card game war. It doesn't feel like that kind of game at all. You're it feel, it, constantly shifting back and forth. Your metaphor is a far sketty. Joel, tell us about this. So, tug of war is a card battle or game, I guess. Uh, it, kind it's, of. Kind of. I mean, you have an opponent that you play against each time. There is a We'll call it a meter on the left-hand side, somewhere between usually like 15 or 30 different tiles up and down. And you start from the bottom of the meter, and your opponent starts at the top, and the different military actions you take will lead you up towards the top. And then you get, once it gets like pushed to shove, when your guys are connecting, that's when the actual war starts. And this game is very uninspired <laughs> i i oh, mean yeah? that i mean that in that a mean. like the the themes are very straightforward right it's like the the mana is gas that comes from a pipeline or a barrel or something like that uh your your weaponry is all can we milli- call it energy hmm? the energy that you need in order pr- to produce units and yeah i i guess technically that's the name for it right okay. fuel i thought uh, it was fuel and there's also support uh abilities too so like some items will some cards will play will give you a support function and then when your machine attacks the enemy combatants it'll increase the attack volume by one or two or so depending on what different abilities there are now when i mentioned diplomat earlier daddy like one of the playable cards is a diplomat oh, I know. <laughs> and then but I'm... once once he finds intel he just just completely folds and disappears <laughs> Yeah, and you take one of your opponent's cards and put it into your deck. No, man, yeah. I uh, I got yeah. what okay. like seven stages in. I yeah, yeah, maybe played for a, an hour. Yeah, this it's fun. Yeah. But I like the different units that you can acquire. My favorite was the one character card where if you gave them a support function, then it would deal even more damage. Oh yeah, and you would be able to take even more land. So positioning your cards when you go to attack at the end of your turn is essential. There's a lot of strategy to this game, and it's very easy to to get caught up in like, oh, you're playing so many turns in a row, and that's, I want to say, I love the feature where if you play for too long, then it starts to decrease the size of the map, yes. and each turn it just destroys a piece of land from each person's side. It's, so it's, It comes as fatigue with the big like yeah. uh, death sign, <laughs> poison yes. sign thing. Going this land on. is fatigued with your war. Yeah, and, and but there's even abilities like the drone. So there's a drone where it'll spawn a character for you to you know attack with, but also it'll leave explosions or something on their end. And when they have to play those cards, it'll destroy the land above them. So there's this great push and pull the whole time between like, do you do more blunt attacks like airplanes coming in? Do you do the uh, destroying the land behind them kind of thing? Uh, there are also options to, like, uh, install capitals and mm-hmm. specific science buildings, which will then open up different tiers of cards. Uh, that gives you a lot more range. Uh, one of my favorites was, I forget the name of it, but basically you would consume a card when you played the card, and then it would gain the, the energy back towards it. Uh, mm-hmm. I found myself using that to 
destroy all the level one cards in my rotation. So instead yeah. of trying to accelerate purchases, I was minimizing the pool of weak cards. <laughs> so I could then, you know, uh, have a, a big, strong attack moving forward on it. Uh, it just if I, I know I know you said you got through it in like thirty minutes, but like part of what I found myself doing playing this demo was just okay. This round, I'm gonna try this. Yeah. You know, okay, this time I'm going to really churn through all these small cards and kill them out quickly. Okay, this time I'm going to play it really conservative and just get the cards that will give me energy so I can just have that foundation. Or, or this one, now I'm just going to be like wild card, just <laughs> go at all these blue cards that are just modifiers and see where it leads me. Yeah, of course, it's, there's it's a it's tremendous it. amount of strategy here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the problem I have with these kinds of games is that I just don't see the strategy. And at the same time, like th- and that's 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 one hundred percent on me. I but I just yeah okay no no I <laughs> get the, it. I, but but I like that Joel like came in and he's talking strategy and Alec is like I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I I, for me, I was just like well no, 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 the reason why I'm asking is because I wanted to ask how do you know which cards are going to be coming up? You don't. It's randomized. Okay. But if you have less of those cards in your hand, the less for you to draw them, then you don't have to worry about getting them. So Joel is completely like again, his strategy to I guess I didn't get that the far. I think I only got to like level five. Okay, there's still a lot of like extra cards that they end up adding on as you go. Okay, okay. and there's we didn't even talk about some of the uh, we briefly talked about like that card that allows you to destroy other cards, mm-hmm. but there's one that infinitely upset me when the other team would play it or the other player would do it which is like the steel intel where it would allow them to select a card in my hand and all copies of that card can't be played for a turn yeah oh, the, that the one. orbital laser I, I, that's what it is i started using that to disable their orbital laser so they couldn't oh, yeah, do yeah. it to me. yeah it, it, yeah that that was a real nuisance it, it was like the the blue blue deck of cards in this game yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was a magic reference. <laughs> you guys understood. Who's who's you guys? The two the on internet? this podcast that actually <laughs> play magic. The the nerds on this podcast. There oh, I such said nerds. It. All right. Um, so uh, Alec, do you have anything you want to toss in there for? No, I got to about uh, level six and kept going back and forth and i ended up losing every time and i was just like I, half an hour and i was like ah, i'm gonna get this game when it comes out <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. this yeah. is definitely definitely on the wish list uh, alex knowing uh, that there's even more depth to the game how do you feel about it uh, it's, 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 yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> there's your answer folks Tug well of war. Spoken. <laughs> I'm, no, I, I'm, I'm, I, these games are always the same for me. I always look at it and go, yeah, this looks like fun. I could figure this out. This is going to be the one. And it isn't. <clears throat> I play it. I, I buy it. I play it for like all of 30 minutes. And I'm like, eh, card, card deck building is not, deck building's bad for me. I don't, it's hard for me to wrap my head around. I'm trying to think if there's ever been one that really like stuck with me. I don't think really no, tech buildings for me. Not a one. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Was we'll Darkness find it Dungeon for you. a deck builder. No. Okay. No. Well, I don't even, know about Darkest Dungeon two, but one is definitely not. Okay. Yeah. They look like they would have been cool cards. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. All right. So. We're going to cut the real dead weight of the podcast here. Alec and I are going to leave. You guys can finish this episode without us. That sounds about right. That is opposite day. Only one that beats games here. (laughs) And we'll take a break. This is the news with Super GG Radio. Now with 
fifteen percent more layoffs? Is that a thing? No, please, please. We somebody put no. something about shuttering studios here, right? I don't, I don't like any of this. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I don't believe in news. I don't even watch the news or listen to it. I just I get my news the old fashioned way. I'm only here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's an it's an it's an NBA situation. If you don't show up to the show, you get fines. I thought that was an NFL. Yeah, so I thought it was an work. NFL player. Uh, like, hey, I know man, it as an NBA Pro Bowl. rule. I'm sure it's also elsewhere. I don't even think it was something that he needed to be there for. They were just like, you have to go. Anyway. Who are we talking about? Uh, news. Yeah, news. <laughs> we're talking about the news. Virtua Fighter reboot is in the works. Yep. Yes. For Virtua Fighter is a fighting game. Does it need to be called a reboot if it's been this long? No. Like, I, I hope they also I, just I throw a number after it. to be it. a numbered sequel at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to work. The main thing is that th- there has been a lot of, like, fan, like, discussion about Virtual Fighter. One of the characters is showing up in, I think it's like, it's either, t- I'm pretty sure it's Tekken. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last two games, so I Tekken. think that people have been, like, ready for that for that series to come back. It was really overcrowded for a while, but now I think that it is, there's a lot of, like, a uh, there's a lot of like nostalgia for it at this moment, so it's a hot commodity, and I think people are people are turning around on it. So uh, it is currently at the works. My nostalgia for that game was showing up at the arcade and going, "Whoa, 3D!" and then ringing <laughs> out somebody, and then that was out my the 3D fighter. <laughs> that was my 3D fighter. Yeah, I, you know, I haven't played one of these since PlayStation Three, but I remember it was it was incredibly technical. Mm-hmm. Like one of the most complicated fighters out of the mainstream ones that I remember. Like it, it was one of those like I love it an idea, I can't figure it out at this age kind of thing. So I yeah. hope it makes a return. I hope there's a fan base for it that can support it. That's just it's not a franchise that I think about too much anymore. It's you. You're that fan base. I'm so sorry, oh, Virtua I'm, Fighter. <laughs> I'm part of it, man. I'm part of it. I really like those games. Alex perpetuates it by buying all the yakuza games so that he can play and then virtual just fighter. playing virtual fighter yeah that is because you can do that. Play that couldn't i yeah interesting mm-hmm. that's how you play but now you'll be able to play without owning any of the yakuza games so that's what i hear Speak, that that is a burden lifted uh-huh yeah speaking of sega i guess Everyone, I don't know who everyone is, but everyone is getting ready for the Switch 2. Alec, are you getting ready for the Switch 2? Yeah, sure, why not? Don't care what uh, Alex th- thinks. <laughs> Joel, are you getting ready for the Switch 2? <laughs> <laughs> I, I am preparing my wallet, yes. Yeah. Um, so so uh, this is this is more about the fact that like there are... Nothing's um, coming out for Switch now. No, but it's it's more the fact of that teams are starting to prep for it, and yeah. in this case, uh, it, this kind of came out of uh, a call with uh, Atlas and Sega that they were currently prepping some of their their remake for the Switch Two, and it's it's not so much like oh everything everyone's focusing on the Switch Two. It's more like the fact that like we're ready to move on, and it, these are our old. Because Persona 3 and Persona 4 are on Switch, so let's bring them to Switch 2. Like, let's start getting the catalogs ready so that we can make some money over here as well. And that's kind of where also the Virtual Fighter news came up. They're like, yeah, and plus we're also deep in development for a new Virtual Fighter. Hmm. Hmm. N- Nintendo's third-party situation has always been a little weird, at least since the Wii days. Because there's always been this yeah. dissonance and in, in graphical fidelity and uh, just horsepower of these systems from Nintendo compared to others to where like even this switch where it was insanely successful right I don't think there was really a lot of parity in third party support though it always seemed still kind of like that you got the A tier of the big boy systems and then the B tier of Nintendo stuff sometimes they would have a port of the same game but like downgrades graphically like Doom is a good example of that really well done But uh, Mortal Kombat One, Mortal Kombat 1. <laughs> that that's, that's still re- have nightmares. 
the, yeah, but the, the the other part is that like now with the way the Switch Two is looking, that it's going to be more powerful. So now you can bring some of the other stuff that wasn't that either may not have been powerful enough uh, for the Switch now can come here that were like say on the PS4. Real question: How quick until GTA Five is on the Switch Two? Day one. I mean, those remakes came, so I don't see why not. Yeah, but that would be more that would be more on Rockstar's side if they were actually interested in. Oh, you know that, that they are. Thing. They are interested in not making any new games <laughs> and just selling everybody <laughs> GTA Five and GTA Online. I the the main thing I would say to the internet is lower your expectations for the Switch follow up. <laughs> now, why? what about why backwards why? compatibility? Why? Because I think there's a lot of people who have this elevated expectation because of the sex of the switch and that it can only mm. go up you know numbers go up and in <laughs> fact nintendo has proven time and time again they can make the numbers go down if they really want to so uh, they're, they're yeah. not a foregone conclusion to be a rousing success afterward uh it seems like they're taking the safe ish route if you go by the rumors of it being sort of iterative but if that's the case too then you're not talking about console parity with the bit boys for too long but yeah, we're not. This is not, this is more PS4. Yeah, level. Sorry, Alec. What were you saying? Well, uh, so we were talking about um, GTA Five and everything, and yeah. of all the old games that are on the Switch getting over to Switch Two. Do you think that will impact backwards compatibility? My understanding is that at least physical physical cartridges are going to be backwards compatible. Yeah. I think it's yeah. more murky once you get outside of Nintendo digital software um it, it's sort of a weird place right does i don't i mean xbox box has some sort of like cross compatibility with their old online systems too but this is the first time nintendo's going to be really trying to bridge something meaningfully between two consoles on the software side um i'll be really curious how that plays out but i'm guessing my speculation is nintendo will have backwards compatibility physical and uh software third parties and indies it'll be up to them yeah, yeah i assume that it'll probably be like digital like i don't like i don't see them abandoning the nintendo eShop or not the eShop, right it's like the nintendo what is it called now? it's eShop. It's nintendo. the eShop. nintendo switch online i mean if you want to talk about yeah. the broader thing um, but I, I just don't think that i can't imagine them abandoning that i think they're kind of just gonna keep that unified so at that point a lot of games will come over i, I think the the one big case nintendo could make for their not being uh backwards compatibility on the new system for software for the eShop would be that it would be a very easy way for them to have a, a fresh clean slate of their eShop storefront yeah but didn't they do that with the switch they did yeah like they but they burned the old stuff to the ground but we Why do it again? but we've had the steam situation now where it's, the mart is just flooded with trash and I don't say that lightly so H games. to anybody who's making video games, but like there are stuff, there are bottom feeder games that are spit out there, or developers who will release a clock app on the place, delist it, and then resell it, and then have it on a discount of ninety percent, and have it be a dollar or something like that, so it stays yeah. on the sales charts too. Like there's so much gaming of the system in the current iteration where I could see them walling things off if just for that alone. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I mean, and, and we didn't even include that, like the rumor of like, oh, the Joy Cons are going to be magnetic. I yep. I don't want to talk it's about like a, that. <laughs> that's what I said. I just like I, I like Nintendo right now is the like that everyone is just trying to like. N like Nintendo needs to earn our guesses. trust on the hardware at this point. Just oh yeah, but I'm saying everyone is just like guessing right now. Oh, I heard this. I heard that about the Switch too, and it's like, eh. I mean, everyone kind of knows like what's that? It's a thing. But every, like there are no 100 percent. I mean, if, if we're getting the articles where the the discussion point is, oh, devs have been able to hold the switch successfully, but only inside a box where they couldn't see it and they could only yeah. touch it with their hands. Like that's the level of silly we're in right now. Exactly. This video. It doesn't end well for anybody. Is that a reference to something? No, I didn't understand it. I'm just telling you. Okay. It never ends well for anybody. 
I, just reach with, into the box, hold something. With, it's oh, definitely that's not a Dune just, reference. It's just talking about a, Dune. Uh, no, you remember when you'd go to the silly haunted houses and it'd be like, oh, just stick your hand in the box. Like, it's what's peeled in grapes. It's, yeah. It's Look, it's, it's spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, pischetti. Oh, they're eyeballs. No, they're just grapes. Great. Yep. No, this is this is just silly. Uh, next piece of news. If you guys are done. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I mean, we don't. We can just talk about the switch too the rest of the night. Nope. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> Microsoft pushing for Fallout Five faster. I wonder what would bring that on. Yeah. Uh. This there's a there's a real heavy fervor. Really. For Fallout. Right now, yeah. Like, uh, like right, right the, now. The Fallout seventy six and Fallout four and Fallout three and New Vegas are all just hitting record numbers on Steam. People Weird. are all about it. I wonder and they did why they did not capitalize on this. Everyone's real mad about that Fallout four graphical upgrade that was real bad and problematic. People had to pay for it. There was a whole lot of stuff. So. Um, there, Bethesda is busy working on, on the Elder Scrolls, what, seven? That was six. Six? Okay. Skyrim, five. I feel like Skyrim was five. Morrowind, Obliv- Morrowind is three. Wait, Oblivion I want him to four. count. Skyrim's five. Yep. All right. We can count the five. So, yep. So can. because of that, they're working on, uh, Elder Scrolls six. And, uh, the, Todd Howard has been, uh, not Todd Howard, uh, Phil Spencer. No, uh, I want to go back to Todd Howard. <laughs> Who's that? Is that a person? I don't person? want to go back to Todd Howard. Is that a person? <laughs> Should I know who that is? Yes. Okay. He's an executive producer on that Fallout show. It, but, w- wasn't he the CEO of Bethesda? Is he still technically that, even though they're bought out? Like, what's his role? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what his role is, but I mean, I, he is one of the head higher-ups. Wait, look at his LinkedIn. Stuff. Uh, we're, uh, you I'm, know I'm he Googling. will. <laughs> Googling. I, Google. Nah, just go to Wikipedia. We're Googling. Uh, oh, I, I don't see how Bethesda could have really anticipated how this went off. Like, I, I know they had confidence in their show, or at least they project confidence, but tying a, He's this tying a TV show to a game like that seems really fraught when you're talking about an RPG versus like a Mario game or something. Yeah. So the thing that I will say about Fallout is that despite the uh, difference that you can build your character, you can play it differently, it's always the same characters that you interact with. So as long as you hit those moments and you see some of these characters or you see um, what you would experience in the game come to life, people like that. But then the way... I've only watched three episodes so far, but the way that they tie things together and weave this story it's really good and i was not expecting it to be as cohesive there's still some camp to it there's definitely campy parts but it's it makes sense and it makes me want to play because you're like oh i remember running into this person or oh i have i remember having my dog companion like this is stuff that you could potentially do so and then and then also if you throw in the fact that there's like even more hidden like p- like pieces of information throughout the show that most people like a lot like if you're like a person that's played all these games before you can see for instance like the main character's brother is a like a very like his body and frame are purposely like shrunk because you can change you know your you know you get different traits and some traits are like you're smaller so you can like fit into smaller places etc cetera, etc cetera. you can build your character up and uh, change their dimensions and stuff like that in the Fallout series, and that and that's like they, they have perks, right? Mm-hmm. And one character's perk is that he's like a very small person, but also he's a hacker. You know, they and like that's very much the game, but it's in the show. Just most people just don't bat an eye at it because they're not that ingrained in it. So there is a lot of that, and in this case, uh, not Todd Howard, who's chief uh, software <laughs> engineer. Uh, it is. Uh, Phil Spencer over at Microsoft who's saying that, hey, they really kind of missed the mark on this. We really got to push them. So we're trying to see what we can do to try to fund them a sec- a, a two-game studio and try to build up to build another Fallout because right now is the time that that should be a thing. 
So. It is. Will it happen anytime soon? I would rather that it not. It's Fallout I would love time, for, Daddy. I would love for Bethesda. Daddy, to, yeah, it's Fallout. It's time. Mario time. It's Mario time. It's Mario time. But the connotation of it's Fallout time just means that here's a game. It's mostly complete. <laughs> Maybe. It's very then. I to mean, to be fans. fair, that sounds like a normal Bethesda just, yeah, that, game. It's, it's their watching remote, a just... horse run down the road and then a troll hit the ground and the horse goes straight <laughs> up into the atmosphere. I once got hit by uh, the same. Uh, I, I think it was a troll. It might have been a giant, but your corpse, like it, just went and it left, and it was gone forever. I can't unsee those things. Thank you, Bethesda. <laughs> what we got next? Um, now uh, the the sad news of the night: Take Two sh- shutting down Roll Seven, and that was the studio that brought Roller Do- Roller Roller Drum R- Roller Drome and Ali Ali World. Man, I didn't think I was going to enjoy Ali Ali World, but it was it's a good. fun game. Yeah, I gave it a what nine point five out of ten. That's just something you could play and like just not think about it. That's how much fun it is. Um, or you could get really good at it. And Intercept Games, which is Kerbal Space Program Two. That means that we that Kerbal Space Program Two got canceled. Okay. Which was coming up in early access, supposedly in the next year or so. It's been in early access for a while. Not two. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fifty bucks. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not getting out of early access. Nope. And that's that's vaporware. Yep. That's there. Getty learned something. <laughs> I learned <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Video games. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we call vaporware, Getty. <laughs> that's what we call vaporware. And here I was just thinking that it was a fun word. Uh, yeah. It's a bummer. It's these these are the there's um there's talk of a restructuring, trying to get things more mainline in the pipeline. I mean, we're, there's a, there's word of that at Square Enix as well, and uh, we, the fan base, all collectively said, not Final Fantasy IX Remake. Please come out. Right? I, I would go for that. that. Yeah, but it's not going to be turn-based. Oh, oh no! No! <laughs> <laughs> no! Get us out of here. You just ruined the podcast. <laughs> Everything, everything's ruined. Why would you say that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for this next segment too. <laughs> Alex's rumor mill. I need a sound bite or a, a, something that goes with this, but all right, we can get there. Uh, but something. this is not Alex. Is this Joel, Joel this time? Yep, Joel's got something. So there you got was a, something uh, for the rumor mill. Yeah, I'll I'll indulge this one time. So uh, there's a Twitter user named one Pioro, time. I believe, who uh, has had a recent history of leaking stuff in advance of Nintendo Directs and announcements from Nintendo. Uh, one of the more well-known ones might be f 99 So he was one of the first that sort of previewed that as well. Uh, he simply posted a picture of an old NES cartridge of the Nintendo World Championships. And uh, for the uninitiated, the Nintendo World Championships originally was something in the, I think, early 90s or mid-90s where Nintendo had these specialized carts made and it would be a series of three different snippets of gameplay that you'd have to complete in succession to get high scores and there was a whole tournament around it um if anybody knows the movie i think was it the wizard you got me man yeah okay there, there, there's a video game uh, i know it okay i got you. there's a movie called the you. wizard where like the main thing was a video game tournament and they were all on stage and like they're playing Mario three or something like that, but it's it's like that. It's like three different separate games. I think it was like Mock Rider, Tetris, and a few others. Uh, they did have a revival of it back in the Wii U era of stuff too, when Nintendo was really just dying and needed something to capture their fans' interest. So it could be one of two things. More likely than not, I'm guessing that's going to be some version of the Nintendo World Championships coming back in some fashion and then what would be really cool is if they had this released on nintendo switch online and they held the qualifiers by how people played it on their own Hmm. switch i think that would be a very cool idea that i don't know that i think nintendo would put that much 
thought to it. So, like the Gran Turismo series. What? The they had a, a they whole did thing. thing that they did. Oh yeah, where they would it, they would have people race, and the best racers got to actually try to be in the uh, in the actual race a car. That's pretty they, cool. They made it. They made a they made a hit film out of it. Alex reviewed it for the internet. <laughs> NPR Illinois, baby. No, the uh, yeah, they kind of did that. They did that with the. It was called the GT. I believe GT series. Phil Phil knows more about it mm. than I did because he watched it live as it was happening. But it's still a very cool idea. I also, I don't remember Nintendo one, but I definitely remember Blockbuster doing something like that. Like it was like a Blockbuster slash MTV thing, and I remember I was like. Oh, I want to try out for this, and I, and the challenges were like get ten bananas as fast as you can in like Donkey Kong, and if you I remember that if you just like pounded the ground like a few feet out of the entrance, ten bananas popped out of the ground, and I remember being like, oh, I'm gonna so get in on this, <laughs> which of course I did not do anything about, and I did not join at all. What could have been? All right, I was like seven or something. That's how he was gonna make it big. It was collecting when those the eleven Donkey bananas. Kong came out. Mm-hmm. It was ten. Gotta collect those bananas. All right. Guess Let's move here. over to freebies. 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 For 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 freebies. All right. We got freebies this week. I am ready to talk about these games, which you can pick up for the low low price of free. Go do it right now. First one. Cat Quest 2 over on the Epic Game Store. I'm not going to tell you anything about this game. I'm just going to tell you to get it. So go get it. Did you get it yet? I got it. it. Good. It It is an instant classic. And this one has co-op. So you can Cat Quest 2. Getty, will you play Cat Quest 2 with me? Maybe. I'm not carrying you, though. Also, on the Epic Game Store, we have Orcs Must Die 3. Um, uh, y'all play Orcs Must Die 1 and 2? It's part 3. No, uh, <laughs> Orcs Must Die is a popular uh, t- action-adventure RPG slash uh, tower defense. Mm-hmm. You're given an area, the enemies will come out of it, you set up all these elaborate traps and, to take them out, and you will be walking around doing spells and abilities to take them out as well uh, as they go in a straight line, and you, you know, tower defense. I will just say, uh, get on the devs of Orcs Must, Must Die 3, because I, I did play Orcs Must Die 1 a lifetime ago, when I first got my Steam mm-hmm. account, and this this is leaps and bounds improved. Like, most, most improved goes to you guys. Good job. <laughs> yep. and this just came out uh, when did it come out it came out real early um, recently oh no it was 2000 it was 2021 I thought it was actually, eh. I'm like I, I remember hearing Recent about it dish. I didn't know it actually came out yeah it's still yeah it's not too far away also just came to game pass there you go but you can get it for free on the epic game store next up we have good luck Nobilis Oblige. Okay, Legacy yeah, that right. of the Sorcerer Kings on Steam. A high fantasy RPG that re envisions turn based combat in dynamic ways, telling the story of Alexander, an idealistic yet pragmatic nobleman. I have to sneeze. I'm good. <laughs> uh, they navigate politics, ent- intrigue, ruling, and love amongst a tempestuous tempestuous civil war uh this is more of like a one of those like like old school like dungeon crawlers where instead of seeing yourself you just see the enemy in front of you and you take turns attacking that way uh but it's definitely one of those old school uh games but it's also still in early access so while it does kind of fit that mold of something of yesteryear when you used to play a lot of these old rpgs uh it still is relatively new this has the vibes of something from like RPG Maker. Yeah, which you know maybe it did. I, that's not a slight. Like I, there's a lot of there's a big community of people who make good games using games that just engine. straight out of those. It's just yeah. it's an engine that people use. All right. Next one, the Twin Paradox on Steam. 
uh, an RPG where you must prepare yourself for the first time travel, make decisions, explore, and learn real science with the scientists of the Beyond Laboratory. It's up to you to make the journey a success. This is more of like a pixel art turn based. This almost looks like a. What, I keep always forgetting it. Earthbound. Uh, Earthbound. Yeah. Yeah, more Earthboundy. Earthboundy. I should play those games. I hear good things. Oh, Earthbound is awesome. I mean, it, it's pretty old. You just play Undertale. It's still good. You just play it's Undertale. It's the same game. I should probably play Undertale again. Wow. All right. Last one. Capybara, the story of Sisyphus over on Steam. And what do those two things have to do with each other? It's a game about a very lazy capybara okay. who wants to take a bath in the top of a mountain. To do this, the capybara must gain speed and cling to obstacles with a rope and a barrel so as to not fall. Mix goat simulator, goat simulator, and getting over it with Bennett Foddy. Okay, I've, I've done. Right. I've got a question you on this one because I looked on Steam's yeah. website and it says wish list. Oh time. no! Okay, so this is an older one. Dang it! Uh, it's not out yet, but it was. Well, hold on. <laughs> Well, hold on. I definitely found this. Like, why would I find that, this game? That's a bummer, because this looks really fun. <laughs> wishlisted, I think okay. I, I think with the way I saw it, it's going to be free. Okay, okay. well, I'm, I'm well, wishlisting that either way. Yeah. That's so, so I think this is one of those, because I definitely found this, and I was like, I don't think I would have ever seen anything like this. Okay, you're right. When unless... I search on the actual Steam app, it says free, and then when I go it, to the page, it says add to your wishlist. So... Okay, so I think it's going to end up being free. Goat Simulator mixed with Getting Over It by Bennett, by, with Bennett Foddy. 11 days. All right. It all makes all right. sense now. We'll find out. I'm going to wish us that as well. What doesn't make sense is how we've been doing this for so long. So let's take a break and uh, have a discussion. I need to get paid. <laughs> with the backlog blog where we play games that are over 50 hours to complete no that's not true at all it looks like we got two two short titles to talk about here in the backlog tonight we got one that i have definitely played and i don't know who the other winner is but we're gonna figure it out here as we play rock paper scissors on air to see who the champion is just kidding um i wanted to talk about duranko yep. wonko yeah, this let's, was play, a, let's talk about Duranko Wonko. This is a free game that Alex brought to our attention um, several weeks ago here on the podcast. And in this game, you play as a Pomeranian uh, just getting dirty and making the house dirty. And that is the whole game. A dedicated like shake-off mechanic, a dedicated roll-in-mud mechanic. And then it just gets like wilder from there. You complete a series of tasks to... Uh, unlock different areas uh basically you just want to get the house as dirty as possible and you get different types of like stuff to get like grimy you can get mud you can get paint you get all sorts of stuff like that this was part of the uh who was it the bandai namco gave away three games for free yeah all the same week yep and uh this is a fun little pomeranian jaunt just making a mess everywhere and shaking it all off and trying to get into the secret basement and the whole time you're getting different and weird items that you can equip to your pomeranian at one point just to it's make like, them look oh, cute you get, you get cute little halo oh and then just like rolling around in the mud like oh that's not that's not good for anybody <laughs> like bust yeah. into the bedroom just start shaking mud all over the bed uh, it, to it start climbing point. up on climbing up like shelves and stuff like that. I can get more range with my mud on the top of the shelf. Uh-huh. Uh huh. At, at one point, there was uh, like a secret switch in the basement that causes all of the wine bottles to explode. <laughs> yeah, definitely did that. Just soaked the entire room. That gave me a, a lot of points. Uh, when you get points, it unlocks 
different stuff in the environment. Some of it is items, some of it is uh, areas that you can access, or or items that appear in the environment that allow you to access different areas, if that makes sense. So it is just a point grab. You are getting everything as dirty as possible to get points. Yeah. Alex, how do you yes. like that elephant head? Uh, the elephant head was good. I think, was there like an alligator one too, I think, or something like that? The there were some cannon. other silly ones. The cannon oh. would just shoot paint everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the elephant head would sh- would spray it, right? Yeah. I you forgot get about that. Yeah. Spurts and splashes of paint. Oh, man. It's just too much fun. It's senseless. It's a free... It's free... There, there's no enemies free. or combatants you need to deal with at all. It's just... A train. <laughs> a toy train. Okay. That's about it. All right. It's, this is power wash in reverse. Yeah. Power wash simulator <laughs> in reverse. Made sense to be done by a dog. Yeah. It yeah. So it's it's super fun, super just relaxing. I, I like the music's kind of just relaxing, and I'm just sitting there walking around, little, little little pup, little pup making a mess, shaking my dirty body all over the place. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't really have much else to say. This is no. relatively short. You can go back. You can just be silly with it. Uh, I showed Lisa it, and she's not huge into video games, but she was completely taken by it. Just the the prospect of playing as a Pomeranian and, and being a little dirt ball. And uh, we also have Your Average Bear. I think that was Alex. You played yep. Your Average Bear. So how much... Yogi Bear is in this. Hey, uh, boo boo. Not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> How many picnic baskets did you steal? A couple. You have to. That's like the kind of the goal. Uh, this is a little short time game. That's just like a fun, relaxing thing. You're a you're a you're a bear, and uh, you get items, uh, and you will use them to you know go around and you there's a, like you the, basically you're at a campground, a big campground, and you're at a hub in the center. And they're all of these animals are like, man, I sure want some steak. Or someone's like, man, I need like five watermelons. And uh, you go around the campground collecting them. And you get things like uh, like tree branches that if you like hold, you could like press the button and he hold, it freezes. And then people <laughs> will think you're a tree. Uh, you could hide bushes. You could put buckets on uh, people's heads. Uh, they will all ch- uh, chase you down and try to like trank you if you uh, get busted. You know, if you're like, 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 like as soon as they get in their vision cone. You're basically pretty pretty boned unless you like go hide. But uh, if you have the tree branches, it's real funny. He just goes like this, and they like freeze and <laughs> they wreck right past you. Uh, and then uh, yeah, you're just kind of creating your own chaos in this campground while uh, completing these quests. Uh, I thought it was adorable. Uh, I definitely uh, like you know just like we're messing with people. I just started putting buckets on everyone's head, and all of a sudden this full campground is just everyone with bucket heads running into each other. <laughs> uh, hilarious. Uh, the bear is real dumb looking in a way that like he just doesn't have any expression. It's just like two black eyes, and it's it's adorable. Uh, yeah, and the art's good. Everyone's uh, everything's pretty funny, and uh, you know, kind of like Duranko Ranko. This one's like a very uh, to the point. You get what they're trying to do. They put this together. Uh, this this team, uh, and then they said, okay, here you go. Here it is. This, your, your mechanics are this. This is the game. Uh, do it and, or not. And so you're just like Yogi Bear? It. That's the whole thing? I mean, you're just completing your quest for your friends who are texting you the whole time. Oh, they're texting? They're, yeah. The wolf is kind of cool. The wolf, like, like, the snake has, like, a scarf on or, like, the wolf's got cool guy sunglasses. Uh, it's, it's very silly. So he's in disguise? Yep. Nice. Everyone's cool people and I'm just a bear. Just trying to help out my friends. This is t- free games, guys. We we played some free games this week. Yeah. Look at that. Put some, put some buckets on people's heads. <laughs> Track some dirt in the house. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll move us on to last segment of the night. One last thing. And this week's one last thing is brought to you by Calling in Sick to Review Games. Uh, this was completely a joke, Alex. I, I didn't mean to target you. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't call in sick. I worked. <laughs> no, but when you were like, man, I, I was not feeling well. Betas. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, this seems somehow relevant, but not really. Uh, but it, then it became relevant. I willed it into existence. 
so I, I'll lead off my one last thing. I have put a little bit of time into Fallout 3, uh, moving around the wastelands, and I uh, am just enjoying walking about, not doing anything. I, I'm killing some fire ants right now. Um, don't recommend fire ants. They're awful. They literally throw fire, like breathe fire mm -hmm. on you. Okay. All right. But I'm getting pretty good at killing them. Uh, I will make it through this game and maybe some of the DLC. The price that they had it on Steam for was obscene. It was like 2 $3, and it was Fallout 3 and all of the DLC, and I never Ooh. had the DLC when I originally played it, so... Woo! One of these days. All right, Alex, what do you got? My one last thing is that I uh, am playing... in. Uh, I, I finished Indica. It review is on the website. Uh... And then I'm also playing another Crab's Treasure just for funsies, and I will say that Indica is still... I'm still, like, thinking about it a lot. I'm just like, oh, man, that game was weird. And also that other part was weird. And why <laughs> was that other thing happening? That was weird. It's all just very weird. Yep, S rank. Joel? There you go. Uh, it has become baseball season again for me, so uh, it is also, once again, retro bowl season. For me, uh, just an update. I'm currently on season 21. I did move to a new city about three or four seasons ago. I forgot why or which, but uh, it's clearly a rebuild season because my quarterback can't throw for shit. My uh, wide receivers oh. get easily. I'll play the Lion King. I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's your rule. <laughs> I, I, st I think I still owe an hour, too. So I like the yeah. the debts accruing. I did it. I did it. I'm gonna stop before I say anything else. I regret. Okay. Well, good luck with your sports ball game. Thank you, Alec. So I started Monster Hunter World last night. Yeah. Really? Which weapon? When did you Which? get it? Was it last week? Last week. Yeah. Okay. Fi finally started it. Uh, I'm starting to look through the weapons, going through, getting in the training room with all of them. Why did none of you tell me that? bagpipes were an available weapon oh yeah no. yeah that no that got introduced in world uh and yeah i love the bagpipe person i could give you videos on how to like create the right tunes, tunes. to help your friends and do the most damage <laughs> yeah you what do you like that you want I, the, the, the i'm the still bard? trying them all out <laughs> yeah i mean right it is the bard everyone likes that like that likes that guy whenever there's a horn around uh, which is like the battle horn or whatever hammer horn I, Hammerhorn, yeah, I'm hyped on it every time. <laughs> it's a uh, you queue up uh, notes in a staff, and then you do an ability to like to hit, actually attack and play those notes, and those notes do things. That sounds perfect. Yeah, so you're like setting up uh, a, th a thing like a buff for like the team, and then uh, you attack and it does that, and then you do it again. Yeah, I still got to play around with them a bit, but but the bagpipes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, charge blade is the more most complicated one of that of the series so far. Okay, I'll probably stay uh, away from that one. Yeah, and then the the insect glaive is if you want to be like flying around, like Ooh. you're just like you're a lot of really airborne stuff, and the dual blades are just if just to click the same button over and over again. <laughs> That's my speed right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me know, Alec. Let me know, Alec. I'll be on with you. Yeah, right. he'll be on. You should definitely play. Maybe he'll teach you how to. I don't know. Are you... so, Alex? Do you have to start a new save, or did you already have one for this? Oh, I beat it on PC, and I beat it on on PS uh, PS4. Yeah, so me, I you, and Hardwood hard hard for a while. We're we're really on Monster Hunter yeah. World. So. So it's more like if, if, like Alec tells me to, I will say, okay, all right, well, just let me know when, and I'll sherpa you through all of the, 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 the content. You'll hang out and fight a puke puke. <laughs> a puke puke? Yes, a puke puke. No, he's just a puke puke. You know I named all these guys because I can't remember their names. Yep. One of them's Troy Palomalu. <laughs> yeah. I know that's a football player, but I don't know... <laughs> what the monster's actual name is. Palumu. 
And then uh, John Leguizamo. It's another one. Oh, yeah. Uh, I and, mean, he's a good actor. <laughs> and also a monster in Monster Hunter. He played that whole role that he was in in Spawn on his knees. <laughs> Forgot about that. All right. <laughs> And that'll be it for this week's episode of Super GG Radio. Before we go, you can find us on Twitter at Super GG Radio and twitch.tv slash Super GG Radio, where Thursdays, much like tonight, you can watch us make clowns out of ourselves. Woo! All or of our you podcasts are secret podcasts. <laughs> or if you, you want to, you know, just listen to the audio-only format, that's fine. But Joel has asked me to make everybody review our podcast Give us one star. Give us five stars. I don't know. Nope. We're watching. Mm-hmm. Only five stars. One star is only. Only five stars. There's a weird star, there's a one weird, star podcast. There, there's a weird thing that if someone gives like a one star, then it just like gives me their address. Leave us okay. one star reviews, guys. <laughs> You'll get <laughs> added to our mailing to list. Meet you. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, Wednesdays, Alex is Monster Hunter. Uh, yes, I did not have time this week, but I will. Be yeah, it was, it was a busy week, so maybe this next week, or maybe the following week. Or, you know, maybe in the near future. Mondays, uh, Joel sure is not playing Mass Effect. It's a combination of him playing, what? Vampire, Vampire Survivor. I owe some Lion King now. <laughs> you, you should be draped for now. <laughs> I am remembering my debt owed. And I will pay the it. Bellatro continues. <laughs> the Bellatro continues until morale improves. There you go. I mean, that's just fun for everyone. Uh, it, look, Luke look, Hero from here on out. Uh, uh, eventually, you're gonna have to just start blaming blaming Ponkel if he keeps on just coming out with new Vampire Survivors DLC. Like I'm, I'm just gonna be on that treadmill forever. There was that like surprise drop like this week, right? Was it? This yep, week or last and that's week? not even counting the Contra stuff. That's about to come out soon. It's. Yeah, what? It's ridiculous. All right. Loop Hero from here on out. Loop, Loop hero. hero. That's a good one. Yeah. Let me know if you beat it. I'm still trying to. One of these days. I'll I almost it. beat the first boss in my first run on my phone. Oh, yeah? But yeah. did you beat the fourth boss? Uh, again, I just started over on my phone. Okay. Well, let me know when you get to the... I, I, don't, think, I don't even think I've seen it. I can only get to the third boss on the fourth map so one of these days i'll see it all right if you'd like to reach us with questions or input our email address is mail at super ggradio.com and provide us a review on itunes or the podcast app of your choice thanks for listening and good game alex gg getty good game joel good game good game alec gg all right we did it Now I can die. With a trio of delightful demos, the GG fighters played detective and shrugged off dead weight in the endless push and pull of the early adopters. But waiting in the wings was a specter of Fred Savage and a simpler time where video game tournaments took place at Blockbuster Video between five copies of Blast Core and Buck Bumble. With the Duranto Wanto behind them, the team is left waiting for answers on how many fidget spinners does Joel own? Is intentionality really a word? Will they use magnetic Joy-Con to pin kids' homework assignments to the fridge? How many handfuls of spaghetti will Getty save in his pockets? And will someone stop sniffing on the audio track? Find out next time on Super GG Radio.